Hi, it's Jeff here with a 25 mark Edexcel essay question on rail nationalisation. Here's the context. The UK rail industry receives over £7 billion in government subsidy each year. In 2023, parts of the network were brought under public control due to repeated service failures and financial losses by private operators. And the 25 mark paper one question is evaluate the case for increasing state ownership using the rail industry or an industry of your choice. I will use the rail industry in my answer. So as always, with an NXL 25 marker, looking for a five paragraph response, two KA points, two evaluation paragraphs, and a final reason judgment, supported by at least one analysis diagram. So here's my answer. First paragraph, one argument for increasing ownership, state ownership of rail services, is that it could improve allocative efficiency and consumer welfare. It's always good to include welfare and efficiency early in an answer. While Network Rail, which owns and maintains the infrastructure, is already state-owned, good application there, many passenger services are run by private train operating companies, so-called TOCs. However, issues such as high cancellation rates, you don't need to know the numbers, and very expensive fares indicate potential failure to meet our needs as consumers. By contrast, state-owned operators, good knowledge there, like LNER, have delivered relatively strong performance with on-time arrival rates of around 85% and high customer satisfaction. I travel regularly on that line. I agree with that. Public ownership can prioritise consumer surplus, good use of concepts and social welfare rather than shareholder returns. This is because state-owned businesses have less if you like, stock market pressure to set rail fares at levels to maximise profits. They can choose instead a satisfying approach, which might then cause fares to be lower. And then I link to the diagram, which I'm going to be using. This is shown in my diagram with the average fares of P2 rather than P1, which in turn encourages more people to use the train. And this can then be good for the environment. Now, you could start your answer with a diagram. Here's a monopoly diagram. Let's say you have a monopoly train operating provider. If they want to profit maximise, they charge price P1 out on average. Uh, and uh, the cost is AC1, so they're making a heavy profit. Whereas a state-owned firm is under less pressure, they might well price at marginal cost. Now, they can make a profit by doing that, uh, but uh, the profit is lower. But consumers gain uh, an increase in consumer surplus from uh, DP1A to DP2B. Now, you might, if you label your diagram, you might then put those areas of consumer surplus into the previous paragraph. That would be a good approach. However, to evaluate, uh, increasing state ownership may risk government failure. Oh, yeah, good point. Publicly run services can suffer from political interference, they certainly can, and crucially, poor cost control. And looking back, historical evidence from British Rail before the 1990s shows that nationalised interests can face underinvestment, inefficiency and stagnation. Without the pressure of the profit motive, there can be weaker incentives for innovation or responsiveness to consumer preferences. So even if state ownership increases service stability, it may come at the cost of productive efficiency, losses might start to go up, and the existing level of government subsidy mentioned in the sum of £7 billion per year might increase still further, which will be a burden on taxpayers who don't use rail services. In other words, somebody has to pay the subsidy. There's no such thing as a free lunch. A second or further case. Nice way to start the paragraph there. Signpost. This is your second KA point. Concerns how subsidies are used and the implications for efficiency and equity. UK rail industry receives over £7 billion a year in support, going back to the STEM. But under the franchising model, private firms can still extract monopoly profits whilst delivering inconsistent service. This creates a principal agent problem where the goals of private firms, profit max, diverge or differ from those of passengers who want affordable fares and a reliable service. That's what I want. In, public, in contrast, publicly owned or state-owned companies such as ScotRail and Northern Rail can reinvest operating profit back into service improvements as a result. In other words, it goes back to the service rather than shareholders. This can improve dynamic efficiency over time, supporting rail infrastructure improvements, new lines, new stations, for example, and also hopefully more affordable fares boosting consumer surplus and reducing regional inequalities. This in turn can help improve geographical mobility of labour, which is a cause of unemployment. So the argument there is that state ownership 
if you can run these services profitably, the money can be reinvested into the network uh, rather than just go as dividends to shareholders. However, from an opportunity cost perspective, that those billions of subsidies uh, have a cost. They tie up government resources that could be allocated elsewhere, such as healthcare, state education, obviously needs more funding, social housing. So billions of subsidy, they, they, no, there's no free loans, there is an opportunity cost. The cost of buying back the franchises, restructuring operations and managing a bigger workforce are substantial. So you can't just nationalise it with that zero cost. And as I'm saying here, even state-owned services are not immune to disruption. Scott Rail, which was nationalised in 2022, has faced strikes and service reductions in the last few years. State ownership alone cannot eliminate those wider structural problems like labour disputes, or, or crucially, you know, there's not enough capacity, especially at peak times when many services are overcrowded and unreliable. So that's my argument here is that's the big issue. How do we improve the capacity and reliability uh, of the system? Is ownership itself necessarily going to solve that problem? And the answer is probably not. Now, a good way to start a final reasoned judgment is to use these two words, on balance. On balance, I would argue there is a strong economic case for increasing state ownership where private operators have failed to deliver a reliable, affordable and efficient service despite the subsidy. Public control can enhance consumer surplus to enable reinvestment and support wider transport and equity goals, in particular trying to link better rail and bus networks. However, and this is an important sort of calibration point, the effectiveness of state ownership depends not simply on who runs the service, who owns it, but on whether the UK government's got the financial freedom to make those investments in new stations, lines and services. And a little hint, a little nod to macroeconomics. At present, the government is limited by very high national debt and rising cost of borrowing. So there we go. That was a walkthrough of a 25 marker. The key thing really is to link it back to the always to try and write in context. Include at least one supporting analysis diagram. And in evaluation, challenge assumptions and throw in phrases like it depends on. And the exams are also looking for that final reasoned judgment at the end. Thanks for joining in. More essay plans to come. See you soon.